Just a quick one. My presentation hasn't arrived yet, so if we want to play a bit more music. Oh, there we go. We're on. We're on. <laughs> um, so I've never actually come onto the stage to music before, so thank you very much for that. I could get used to it. Um, so I've calculated that in my own head, without the use of generative AI, that there have been 19 sessions with AI in the title before me. So if this is your 20th session, or whether it's your first one, I'm going to try and share something new and deliver some actionable insight for you. Um, so um, I'm going to very quickly give you an overview of the generative AI marketplace. And then as we are daring, I'm going to try and dare to segment the mindsets and motivations of business leaders around the world of how they perceive generative AI. So I'm a very big believer in that everyone will only remember one number from a presentation, and if it's important enough, to give it its own slide. So about two years ago, only very few of us were aware of generative AI, um, and we're predicting that by 2032, it will be a $1.3 trillion industry. Um, and don't just take my word for it, take the experts. So Mandeep is our senior industry analyst who provides in-depth reports for our professional investor audience. So he's predicting that generative AI is going to grow at 42% compound annual growth rate and actually equate to 12% of the total tech category. The knock-on effect of that, that the tech category will grow as a result. So things like you know, the increased demand for servers, storage, the deployment through cloud, as well as things like the refresh cycle for smartphones, PCs, to keep up the processing. So AI, generative AI, is very much here to stay. So on to the insights. Um, the start point of this was really looking through a lot of sort of desk research, looking across the consultancies, reports on how adoption rates within business. And we kept coming across to the same pattern, and then there's a bit of a disconnect. So 60% of business leaders within their organization uh, think that AI is underutilized. But at the same time, 85% think their organization should be using it on a frequent basis. So there's this disconnect between the perceptions and familiarity with Gen AI compared to the actual adoption rates in business. So that was our kind of start point, and that got us thinking, wouldn't it be better, a great idea to get a better understanding of how business leaders perceive a sample of generative AI brands? So we have built our own Bloomberg brand accelerator system. Um, this is a proprietary diagnostic tool um, where we capture the perceptions of global audiences around the world. So speaking to C-suites, business decision makers, financial decision makers, to get them to rate hundreds of brands across numerous industries and across key markets around the world. Um, now, to sort of bring that to life so you, <laughs> you can understand what I'm talking about, um, and I realized this is meant to be an inspirational session, and I'm going to have to talk through methodology just after lunch. So if you've got any coffee, now is a good time just to have a sip on it. Um, but we have built our brand health system around five core key constructs. So every brand should start with a solid brand vision. And that is the promise you deliver to consumers. As you build that brand vision, the early adopters come in, and you start to build trust as you deliver on that promise. As you deliver on that promise, it becomes relevant to a wider group of people. And those three metrics represent the future potential of your brand. At the top, we have familiarity and strength, which represent the past performance of your brand. So once people have answered how visionary or trusted you think these generative AI brands are, we then ask them a range of brand statements. So do you think they are ethical? Are they socially responsible? Are they disrupting business? Are they innovative? Do they have a brilliant CEO? And what that allows us to do, to do is actually identify the key drivers of brand vision and brand trust. So if you're a brand, this is how you connect with the audience. So at the end of last year, we included nine generative AI brands into our, present, into our study. So from the open source platforms, chat-based AI tools, as well as the text to video editing. Um, and the first point always is just to understand the familiarity levels with them. So I think what we found really fascinating is that ChatGPT, even though it's only been around for about a year and a half, is already a kind of household name. It is 
familiarity levels very similar to IBM, who's been around 100 years. Uh, and I know IBM are on after me, so I'm not going to go any more into that, otherwise I'll cause a debate. But also what's really interesting is that ChatGPT is higher familiarity than its actual parent brand, open source AI. So we know the level of familiarity, and what we really want to do now is get under the skin of our business leaders. So we asked a range of questions about their mindsets, their motivations, their adoption rates, of the benefits in business, um, how, how the adoption rates, and then we ran a cluster analysis matching those mindsets up to their demographics, their media consum consumption behavior, and that essentially led us to four mutually exclusive segments, which are, um, now normally I'd get you to do a, a, a show of hands, but I won't do that after lunch, and I can usually tell from people's faces which segment you sit in. So 22% are the embracers. So this group are fully embracing AI. They're excited about it. They talk a lot about it. Generally, they're using it a lot in their day-to-day -day lives. So for those people that kind of had a very content smirk on your face and maybe did a little quick fist pump, you know who you are, you are in that group. Um, the biggest group by far was the watchful, 41% of people into that. So they are intrigued by what generative AI can do, but a little bit hesitant to take the first step. Um, so generally, if you're in that group, you've kind of had a little smile to yourself, had a little nod, gone, yes, that's me. The ambivalent, so it's not for them right, right now. They're sort of resisting change, they're happy with the way things are. And then the fearful, who are completely afraid of it and avoid it, and I'm pretty sure that none of you are going to be in the room today. So what we want to do is really try and create a profile for who these people are. So if you're trying to get generative AI into the business, how do you, who are these people you need to seek out? Um, and as I go through this, I, try and, I always think, try and get an idea of who this is you know in your life. Whether it's personally or business, you will know someone that fits into these profiles. So the embracers, they are all about AI. They're excited about where it's going to. They're always looking at the next big thing. They're, what's really interesting as well, they're more likely to be in the most senior leadership positions. So more likely to be C-suites, employed in the tech industries, consuming an awful lot of business news. Um, and what that means is they're more aware of the regulatory concerns around it. But if you compare that to the watchful group, this group are more likely to be in the finance industries, more likely to be in senior positions again, but very much aware that there needs to be a business case. They want to see the proven benefits of AI in the business before they take the first step. Um, the ambivalent group, as I said, they're resisting change. They're happy with the way things are. They have a, if it's not fixed, if it's not broke, don't fix it mentality. And they're more consumers of consumer tech news. Um, the fearful group, they get their news sources from word of mouth. So they're more around the sort of doom and gloomers, uh, how AI is going to take around the world. They're kind of the laggards on the diffusion of innovation curve. Um, and to really connect with them, it's very much around building trust. You know, they'll only do it once everyone is doing it and the business has told them, this is how we're going to do. So they're your kind of four key segments. What we wanted to do now is really just take, sort of peel back that layer of the onion to get a little bit deeper on who this group are and what really drives trust among this group. Oh. So, with the Embracers group, um, what was really interesting with this group is that they really believe in the CEO's vision. Um, so they buy into that vision, they're very aware that the company needs to be socially responsible for them to take action. So this is the group kind of, if you can imagine, wearing the Sam Altman t-shirt, they are supporting him, they're commenting on forums. That's what they see as the major trust. They believe in that vision from the CEO. For the watchful group, who are more likely to be in the financial industry, these lot take very calculated risks. So they want to ensure the brand aligns to their company values. So to drive vision and trust among this group, they're really looking at if the company supports racial gender diversity, um, as well as making sure it's a good place to work. So are the, consumer, are the actual employees content with their workplace? 
The ambivalent group, much harder group to break down. So this is very much about honesty, being ethical, so being showing the prestige of the brand in an honest and ethical way. And for those fearful ones, you need to be completely transparent with them. Start building trust from the ground up, do it in an authentic way, and show that the business, the brand has a purpose beyond profits. So they are here to help the world rather than just to make money. Um, so how do we proceed with all that information? So what we try to do really is understand if we are going to adopt generative AI into the business place, how is the best way to do it and how is the best way to communicate with these people? Um, so the embracers, as we said, we place a lot of belief in the founders as well as being socially responsible. Um, we just believe in getting these embracers together as a group. Um, Claudia from Telecom yesterday said that they created the Center of AI for Excellence, where they have created, got all their AI embraces together, doing the better for God. It's a perfect example of how it works. So they're, because they're passionate about the CEO's vision, they really respond well to events, getting, getting in front of the CEO to hear their vision and how socially responsible they are. The watchful group, while they are respectful of generative AI, they need a little bit of a push over the table. Um, because they are the business opinion leaders, they need data points, they need benchmarks, they need ratings, they need proof that generative AI is actually having an impact. What really works well with this group is competitor case studies, so showing how their competitors are using it for competitive advantage. The ambivalent group, they need a sort of general sense that this company is honest and ethical. So to connect your message with this group, it's very much about successful, honest, real case studies. So speaking to real employees with real people, showing that human emotion to show that ethical side of the business. And then the fearful group who are still suspicious of any motives regarding AI, it's very much about bringing, you know, building trust from the ground out, being completely transparent about the ethical code, the moral regulations, the benefits, the pros and the cons, to start the conversation from the ground up to build that level of trust. Um, so what I've kind of done now is you've got these different groups, these audiences, and we try to distill that into three distinct principles to take away. So first of all being stick to your brand. Um, I think we've been called out before where people try and build their brand around generative AI, where it is very much about building generative AI around your brand. So using your brand's vision as a lens to proceed forward and let generative AI build into it. Take your time and experiment. So um, this is one we see often again. People want to jump on the early adoption curve. But with generative AI, we know it is here to stay. So play, test, experiment, build groups, listen to people within the organization. And finally, know your audience. A one message does not fit all approach with this group. So whether you're a generative AI brand trying to get involved in a business, or whether you're trying to increase adoption rates, make sure that you tailor your message to all of those audience groups to make sure it really connects and everyone is on the same journey with you. Um, so what I wanted to try and do, and finish on one point, is that I try to find one single phrase that works well in German that really summed all that up. So I got to a phrase which was, I'm going to massacre this, because I do not speak any of German, I wrote it down, so, man sieht den Wald vor lauter Bäumen nicht. <laughs> which translates to, <laughs> don't, <laughs> you can't see the forest for the trees. So don't get caught up in generative AI in the detail. Keep your eye on the big picture and your brand's vision, and everything will be okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>